Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Augusto Argandoña Fine Arts. Any time in the course of this narrated tutorial, you can click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and I would also appreciate your comments in regards to this particular video or for that matter any of the videos in my channel. If you should want to learn about my virtual classes or want to see my paintings, you may do so in my website at aafinearts.com. This tutorial is uh, one uh, which will be a fairly simple scene. Uh, it's it's going to be a, a stream um, in a mountain area. There will be some um, deciduous trees maybe some pine trees and uh, the primarily uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to paint uh, as, uh, a landscape scene using value patterns meaning I'm going to be using quite a bit of contrast between light and dark areas a lot of sunlight and shadow areas uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in the water and in the rocks and the and the, the land and there will be some some rocks also so i'm going to show you how to do that as well so without much ado i'm going to go ahead and start with the painting i work primarily on um, 140 pound cold press paper i have worked on the other types of paper but uh, uh, 140 pound cold press is my paper of choice and um, for the most part I also use my flat brushes I use uh, the round brushes to do some uh, detailed work and perhaps some foliage for the trees but for the most part I more partial to the flat brushes and my pigments are uh, I use about two or three brands there's one brand that I use the most uh, it's uh, uh, the initials are W and N, so you draw your own conclusions. So, I, like I said, without much ado, I will start with the painting. I'm going to start by use, adding a little bit of water to the sky area. Um, I'm going to be showing um, that area is not going to be too strong i want to show a little bit of uh, you know when there's some level of humidity not too much in the mountain areas but the sky is not as bright so i'm going to use a little bit of uh, manganese blue and cobalt blue which combination that makes a really nice color for the sky so i'm going to just drop a few brush strokes leave some areas for or clouds like that maybe a little bit over here and that's about it for the sky no more than that um, also when I have those colors I'm gonna make a rich very rich mixture of um, well, before I do that I'm gonna use uh, my larger flat brush and I'm going to add some water to this area. Basically to the whole area here where the water is going to be. But coming down to where the land meets the water. I'm going to add a little bit more water here. Make sure that's pretty much saturated. Anytime you paint water, you have to use quite a bit of water, and that I do. So I'm going to remove some of the excess moisture so I can just. And so there, there's just a little bit of sheen on the, on the, on the paper. So now I'm going to make, as I was saying earlier, a very rich mixture of cobalt blue and manganese blue. And I'm going to go ahead and drop some of that color over here. Ref showing the reflection from the sky. Like 
come down over here like that. And uh, come over here to all the way down to, to some areas where the, water, where the water will be. I'm going to show a little bit of that over here too, a little bit of that color. But primarily here. And in order to accent that blue in that area, I'm also going to bring some um, burnt, uh, not burnt, but uh, ultramarine blue. Make this a little darker. This area, this little area. And then I'm just bring that color right onto the rest of the water area. Okay, so now I'm gonna let that dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and with a thirsty brush, remove some of this and make it a little lighter. I'm gonna let, let that dry. Okay, my sky is pretty much drying nicely. It's a little feel, very wispy type clouds. And uh, so now, um, make sure that the sky area is still kind of wet, not too much. Now I'm gonna use some, my mop brush and I'm gonna start laying the base colors for the, for the trees. But before I do that, I will go ahead and do the distant mountain. And for that, I'm gonna use some, um, I'm going to use some brown matter and cobalt blue, more on the cobalt blue side. And I'm not going to, I'm going to go ahead and do over, go over those trees, it doesn't matter. I'll go dark there later. Um, I'm going to also bring in some rose matter and the cobalt blue and get that uh, distant mountain like that, like that. Um, I'm going to bring in some ultramarine blue, very light. I'll give it a little touch of the ultramarine blue, just throw that into the distance a little bit more. Then I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and come down in the lower area. That yellow tends to break the color colors and it's really nice there, nice treatment. all the way to the edge of the water. There, that's my mountain is looking pretty good now. Now, also I'm gonna bring in a little bit of aureole in yellow and uh, the cobalt blue and the very light and I'll give a little touch of green, green to that uh, mountain. So some greenery that will be on the, towards the lower area. Like that. There's some indications of trees in the distance, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone like that. So now that's the distant mountain. Make sure that the, okay, this is almost dry now. So with this mud brush, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some water here where the trees are gonna be. ahead and barely touch that edge. And I bring more water and uh, I'm gonna miss the area where these rocks are gonna be here. Because those rocks are gonna be in the sunlight.
There. Make sure that there's enough water there. Bring water into that area. Now, I'm gonna make a nice mixture of uh, aureolian yellow and cerulean blue. With a touch of yellow ochre. And I start bringing some of the light, lighter colors where the foliage will be. They're getting a little bit of the detail of the edge of the trees. Like that. Come down here, kind of meet the mountain for now. And get those colors, a little bit more of the cerulean blue make a combination of cool and warm greens. Like I said, I'm missing those areas where the rocks are gonna be. Now, I'm gonna start increasing the value of those colors. I'm gonna change, change from yellow ochre to raw sienna. Get a little bit of warmer colors over here. All while the paper is still wet. And I'm gonna bring a little bit more color right to the edge of those rocks and to the edge of the water. This brush is ideally suited for this type of treatment. I'm gonna bring in some of that the greenery right into into the distance area and um, with a little bit more uh, cerulean blue bring some of that greenery into this area more into the distance there like that now I'm gonna bring a little bit more of the cerulean bloom with the raw sienna. Make a much richer mixture. Aureolian yellow, raw sienna, and cerulean blue. Start darkening some of these areas. All while the paper is still, still damp. It's actually it's pretty well pretty wet like that yeah. now I'm gonna start adding a little bit more of the cerulean blue to that mixture to make a little more cooler over here I'm blending right into the warm greens Paper still wet, but it's beginning to dry now. So I'm gonna start bringing those colors right to the edge where the rocks are gonna be. As I said, this brush is really good for this because it has, it holds a lot of water. It can hold a lot of pigment, but at the same time, you can do some very fine because of the tip, it's become very fine uh, edges, like I'm doing right here. There. All right, so now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more cerulean blue for this area, make a little cooler mixtures. and bring that right into this distant trees. Blow them out a little bit. Okay, like that. Now, I'm gonna start getting a little bit more of the edging of this forest over here. Like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna change 
from uh, those colors, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change to raw sienna again, less water in my brush, and this time I'm going to add a little bit of a permanent sub green, make a different type of green here. And still come over here into the warmer areas where the paper is still kind of damp. It's 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 losing paper is losing it all actually has lost its uh, wetness. It's, it's all damp now. So I'm gonna change brushes to my number ten round, and uh, I'm gonna do those colors. Rosiana and um, permanent sub green. I think I'm going to change and go back to the mark brush. Um, so and I'm also going to change colors to the, the greens to under sea green with the Rosiana. A little bit of the aureole in yellow, but mostly raw sienna and the undersea green. There we are. Like that. I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, all the green, permanent sub green, or well, some of the green lighter, cooler greens over here. Combinations of those colors, bring it into the warm greens. There we are. Blend all of this, bring it down like that. Okay. So now I'm going to blend this a little bit more. Clean my brush first. And you remove some of the pigmentation from this area where the lighter foliage is going to be in the sunlight. Like that. And now I'm going to continue working on that foliage, but now I'm going to bring in a, a much stronger values, start doing the darker areas. I'm going to use more raw sienna, more uh, under sea green, and this time I'm going to introduce ultramarine blue. It'll be a duller green. Here we go. Not not over, over over the whole area, just a few areas like this. Just vary the color. Change brushes. A little bit more ultramarine. The raw sienna. And I have a little bit more control with this brush now. There, there, there we are. Okay, now 
I'm also going to bring more of the permanent, uh, I'm sorry, the, the undersea green, the rose sienna, and this time with uh, some paints gray. And now I'm going to start doing a little bit more control type painting, especially down here by these rocks. down to the edge of the water. Give a little bit of texture there. There. Do a little bit of that over here. A little bit more. And someone I'm also going to bring some burnt amber. The under sea green and the paints gray. A little bit, little, little bit of darker colors over here. This is where the values that I said will start playing. A little bit of the, the texturing where the foliage here is using those colors like that. Also going to bring in a little bit of uh, ultramarine, tone down some of those colors. Over here, do a little bit of the texturing for the, for the cooler areas of the forest that are in the shadows, in the shades, like that. A little bit more ultramarine with uh, permanent subgreen, the cooler areas up here. And over here. that. I'm going to cool down some of these areas over here too. There. Tone them down. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of the aureole and yellow. Tends to that aureole and yellow has a beautiful quality. It tends to break dark areas like I'm doing right now, and it's a really gorgeous effect. There we are. I'm also going to add a little bit of texture with the spray some water here. There. And a little bit of more texture in there, like that. But I'm gonna leave it primarily like that and let that dry. While that's drying, and with my thirsty brush, I'm gonna start removing some, some highlights where the sun is gonna be showing some of the lighter greens, like that. In fact, what I'm going to do is, with my paper towel, I'm going to pick up some of that, like this. That's better. There, like that. Maybe a little bit over here, too. There. And over here. There it goes, so that's really nice. Okay. 
I'm gonna let that dry. While that's drying, I'm gonna bring in some of the same similar colors, and um, I'm gonna start adding some of the greenery that's gonna be over here in the shade. So before this dries completely, I'm going to add a little bit more texture into that area. This time with the um, paints gray and the sea green. And then um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of sepia. I'll do a little bit of more texture here. Indications of the the darker areas that are in the shade. Like that. Same thing over here. And some of the cooler colors over here like some of the other cooler colors over here too Some over here. I'm gonna do this a little warmer with the burnt amber and the sea green. There, like that. Bring some ultramarine into that and some of these areas over here start doing the texturing for all this foliage that's over here in this area yeah okay so now, at this point, what I'm going to do is, with the same brush, I'm going to pick up some ultramarine, some uh, of the permanent subgreen, and I'm going to put some evergreen sticking out of this foliage over here. There we are. Maybe a little lighter in all the areas. Here and over, another evergreen, a little bit darker. Not too much there, like that. Do a little bit more of the detailing over here. There we are. 
there. Okay, now I'm gonna get some cerulean blue mixed with some of this green, and I'm gonna put some evergreens into the distance over here. See down, got me working standing up. Now I'm gonna do the the rest of the the water. This area is gonna be a little bit on the white side, but uh, also there will be some reflections from the all of this greenery here. I'm gonna go over this gel now that's fishing. quite a bit of water over here but only this is dry now only up to here like that there and now I'm going to use the same colors that I use for the forest use a lot of raw sienna with this green and start dropping some of these colors. Very well, right like that. My paper is at a slight angle, so that's, will take advantage of that, of gravity, to do this. I'm gonna leave some of this nice, blue over there like that. I'm going to bring more of that color, bring it all the way down here. Like that. I'm going to remove some of this from the edge. Then I'm going to bring a little bit more of some of the, the uh, permanent sub green. Like that. A uh, little bit of uh, ultramarine blue. And now I'm going to bring in some of the, the sun. A little bit of the sub green, but mostly the under sea green with the raw sienna, make it really dark. And on that damp paper, I'm gonna start dropping those colors in and, and then tilt my, paper, my board a little bit more. I'm gonna leave some areas where those reflections for those rocks will be. Down over here. Like that. And now I'm going to bring some of the same colors. I'm going to add some paints gray to that. some of the darker areas. I'm 
and let, let water and gravity take over here. sepia in some areas over here darken some of these reflections like that let that dry but before that dries I'm going to bring a little bit more of uh, just clean oriole and yellow and see what happens here. That's what happens when you do the clean oriole and yellow. It breaks the, pi the pigment really beautiful. Like that, see? That's gorgeous. I'm gonna let that dry. And uh, while that's drying, I'm gonna go, and go ahead and uh, do a little bit of the really dark areas over here. You see sepia, and the sea green, and paints gray. Paper is kind of dried now, so I can do this. some of that texture over here too. A little bit of texturing with my finger in that area. Bring some of that over here because the paper is dry here. this with my my hand but I'm gonna fix this a little bit of a ripple there there we are okay so now this is dry I'm gonna bring a little bit more oriole and yellow into this distant area not too much That's just enough. All right. So I'm gonna do this um, every this three trunks. So for that I'm gonna use some um, brown sienna, a little bit of uh, burnt amber. too much. Yeah. 
also gonna use some manganese glue. And um, I don't want to do much over here because this is still very wet. But what I will do is I'm going to start removing some, because the paper is beginning to dry with a thirsty brush, I'm going to start removing some highlights, especially where these reflections will be. With a smaller brush. reflections from those rocks but still within the colors of the water I get some ripples there and like that one over here and then over here Water is almost, paper is almost dry here, so this is a good time to pick up all these ripples. shadow side of those rocks. to the shadow side. There. Also bring in some rose matter. Yeah, nice color. more rose matter some of, some of the rocks here a little bit of cobalt blue there there we are now let that dry um, give some of that blue on this side of the reflection That's it. So now I'm going to go back here and do some of the foliage for that, uh, for those trees. And for that, I'm going to use some uh, uh, raw sienna. 
a little bit of the permanent sub green. Um, paints gray. This is going to be pretty dark because it's against the looking against the light. Also, use a little bit of sepia, get at this dark, dark, dark areas. These are evergreens. Ultramarine, get some of the dark side of this, these trees, the tree trunks. A little bit of brown sienna too. Pretty strong kind of reddish type mixture. Like that. And with that, I'm also going to get this, some of this edges of the branches that are coming out of that trunk. Yep, this is dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and darken this area. Um, this is going to be, I'm going to bring in some um, fairly strong ultramarine here. Same thing on these rocks. land area. More, more of the color of this blue area. I'm also going to bring in some uh, Windsor Violet. Some mineral 
violet also. Stubborn area. More mineral violet here. Okay, like that. And um, some um, sepia. Ultramarine mixture because all of this is dark, it's in the shade. This rocks. Ultramarine to these dark areas. Now, then I'm going to get uh, some my um, Craig Hard type edge, and with that, I'm going to do some scrap, scrape for this rocky area. Something over here for these rocks. Like that. sepia with my round brush, quite a bit of sepia and the sea green and, and paints gray and make a really really dark green. Here and do this greenery that's over here. Combine it right into this all the greenery. This is all done on dry paper. Bring it right into the where those trees are. And right on the top of those rocks. some of that over here. Like that. Right by those rocks. A little bit more paints gray. And do this over here. grasses or whatever this over here and some over here and by the water I'm going to 
over here. Uh, and that's it, pretty much. So now I'm gonna get my flat brush and um, get some of these greens and dark areas and come over here and that do the dark area right by the edge of the of this forest. some of this dark green right at this edge. Like one more bit and get my the same brown brush and do some darker effects on this edge of the water. sepia and the paints gray and then there's uh, three trunks right over here I'm gonna put one over here and uh, do another one over here smaller Not good, but we'll fix that. There, yeah, easy fix. Not good at all. And another one, much lighter one over here. brush will do some more definition for this branches like that Yep, More like that, and that's about it for those those, those uh, tree trunks. I'm gonna do another one, a couple over here, thin one, maybe one over here, like that, and um, I'm gonna add a little bit more color to this tree trunks that are in the shade over here. There, like that. And a little bit of definition for some of the rocks that are in the distance. 
I'm going to make kind of a gray color. There we are, like that. Okay, so now I'm going to get uh, ultramarine blue, um, brown matter, and sepia. And this fisherman over here. It's going to be on a, some type of hat. to the hat area, a little bit of color there, a little bit of brown sienna. There we are. And uh, get uh, his reel. Efficient gadget. Yeah. I better clean up this mess that I made over here. I'm not, I'm not gonna touch this. Well, maybe I will. I'm good. A little bit. Bring some of this blue into this area a little bit. some little bit of water here and uh, get some of this greenery get the softer edges like that there and uh, lastly uh, I'm gonna get my watercolor pen and um, do the his there. That's it. That's it for that. But he's getting some sunlight. tape, put this on a darker board, and you're going to see them be able to appreciate this a little bit more than the way this on this dirty whiteboard. This top tape is always hard, I don't have no idea why, the top tape is very hard to remove. Here comes the dark board. Put this on the board, and uh, there it is. I'm gonna re minimize this. Um, there, this nice play with light and darks, some texture on the foliage, very dense uh, trees, tree line there, and. Um, Straighten this up a little bit. There we are. Uh, good play of um, warm and cool greens in the distance. Some of these rocks that are being bathed with sunlight, light coming from the left hand side. All of this is in the shade. This is in the shade. You know, very dark against the the, the 
the sky and the distance, uh, the distant mountain, and very nice and soft reflections, reflecting all the colors that are over here. Little light areas in the water and towards the distance. This, I wanted to leave this area here, reflected color from the sky. And then the gentleman that's doing some fishing there. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, watching this demonstration and I hope you enjoyed my painting. And please visit my website at aafinearts.com. There you will see information about my virtual classes and a selection of my paintings and prints. Until next time.